Hello guys, Lucas Snailer back again with another video and today because I'm washed I have a hard time to hit clips in ranked so I can't really get any gameplay for you guys But the least I can do is to show you how your gameplay can be better Which means that today I'm going to go over some optimization skills for the tab s9 How you can increase your frames reduce input lag get better ping have it so it doesn't overheat I'm going to go over all my tips that I know so far about the Tab S9 of how we can optimize it. Because, you know, it's not like the iPad days when you just buy an iPad and you use it. Here you actually have to go into some nitty gritty settings to get it all going and for the game to work well. So, without further ado, let me show you how to do it. So, just one thing before we get started is that I want to try the game without any of the settings that I'm going to use. And all I can say is that, I mean, it's playable, but there are definitely improvements to be made. So, come on, get it, get it. I, uh, it's pretty hard, the input delay doesn't feel that great. The touch sensitivity is a bit like a plus that, of course, as you can see, we have some 90 frames per second, which we want to crank up to 120, of course. Either way, we're going to go into the first setting here that is very important actually. And the apps you need is Shizuku, Icebox and your normal settings app. After that, what you want to do is to go into the settings, scroll all the way down to about tablet. Go into software information and then press the bill number seven times. So this will open developer options, which we are going to use later as well but for now we're just gonna turn on the wireless debugging after that let's go back to the shizuka mode here we go it's in pairing and what you want to do is to actually press into the wireless debugging pair with new device and you'll see that a pairing service is found so this code 947305 we're just gonna put it in And press send and the pairing is now successful with Shizuko so we can now go back to the Shizuko app and press on start and it should load a bit and now it's good to go so what you want to do now is to go into the icebox app that you also downloaded so this menu may look a bit different for you for me it's just to press allow all the time with Shizuko uh, I already had this app installed before, obviously, so uh, maybe the data saved, but as I said, it may look a bit different. But either way, after you pair Shizuku, it's going to be the same. And what you're going to do is to go into the system, as I did right here. And you're going to scroll all the way down to the game booster and the game optimization service. And having these two apps selected, you're going to press freeze. Should they allow this or not? I don't know. That's up to you. I'm just going to allow it for now, just in case, you know. Either way, that's actually the first setting. And what this will do is to decrease the input delay by a lot. And I mean a lot. The game will feel so different and you will feel way more pro. So why I'm telling you guys about this setting first is because it's probably one of the most important ones to be able to play the game with great frames and low input delay. I mean, it's kind of hilarious that it's actually called the Game Booster and Game Optimization Service, but what they actually do is to do the complete opposite. Especially from what I heard, the Game Optimization Service definitely doesn't optimize your game. I know some people like to use the Game Booster. For me, I tried it on the previous tabs. It didn't really help. And we have so many other great and important settings to go over. So we're just going to freeze it for this video. So for the next setting, which is actually to get 120 FPS, the first application that you need is multiple accounts, which is this one right here. And you can just download it from the Google Play Store. After that, I will leave a link down in the description. So what you need to download is this app called Root Browser. So it looks kind of sketchy and maybe it is, but it has worked great so far. So you're just going to press download. And open file and install so I've done this before but I believe that when I did it for the first time I needed to trust the Samsung Galaxy browser to download apps 
uh, which you probably need to do for the first time as well. Either way, now when we have these two apps here, you're just gonna go into multiple accounts. So when in here, what you're gonna do is to first things first, add the Samsung internet browser here. Therefore, you need to add Fortnite. You just have to load a bit. So it added Fortnite and now let's go to root browser. We can add it while we're still at it. So what you're gonna do now is to just open Fortnite and smoke. I forgot you have to wait for it to download. So this may also take some time, but we'll be right back after it loaded in. So after you loaded in, maybe you need to log into your game again and you can actually choose whichever browser you want. This is a little grin from the future and you actually can't use whichever browser you want. Of course, you have to use the internet, multiple accounts, a browser. If not, you will actually be logged out from the game whenever you try to use 120 FPS. So just use the multiple accounts version. So once you load it into the game, what you actually want to do is to just close it down and go back to multiple accounts. After that, we're going to finally open the root browser app. And while doing that, I'm just going to move my face cam out so you guys can see what's going on on the screen download utilities press yes then green arrow back so after that there are quite a lot of steps that you have to follow or quite a lot of right presses but we're just gonna take it slow and you guys can just follow along so the first one is data after that we're gonna press data again then excellence multiple accounts after that we're just gonna scroll down press game plugins Epic Games Fortnite, then the plugin info. What we want to do is to delete this one and we want to go back to the multiple accounts. We're going to one key repair Fortnite and then one key repair root browser. And after that, we just go back into root browser. So this one key repairing thing and to delete the plugin info, you just need to do the first time. And after that, we're just going to follow the same steps again until we come to this page. And what you want to do is to go into the files after that Unreal Engine, Fortnite game, Fortnite game again, save, config, Android, game user settings, and you're going to open them. So there are quite a lot of steps, but eventually you will probably do this a lot because these settings aren't actually in-game settings and they tend to reset quite a lot. So what I also like to do is to check this box, always use this application, just because you usually go into these settings a couple of times every gaming session. And after that, we have some settings to go through. So the first one is B show grass and B show motion blur. These two should be at false. Um, after that, you're gonna scroll down and here we have the ultra important settings the mobile fps mode and of course you want to set this to a solid 120 <laughs> and after that we have another setting which tends to actually decrease the input delay which is b use we sync we're not super sure about this setting but um, in my opinion, especially since I also use Elgato and have to use other settings, I think it helps a lot. But what you can do now is to just open Fortnite. So as you guys can see, there is no FPS counter, but I can feel that it is on 120 FPS. Either way, we have to go back to the settings and we have to set them right. I prefer to play at a solid 73 the rest, though this one is lagging a lot and I, we're just gonna go with the 6.9 and after that I would like to show the FPS so what you have to do now is to just close the game close this file again and then just reopen everything and redo the steps and put back the settings because they tend as I said before they tend to reset a lot the mobile FPS mode have resetted I believe Oh no, we sync also resetted. So you're just gonna go back. And as I said before, at least the we sync setting and the FPS setting, they tend to reset whenever you go into the actual settings in Fortnite Mobile. But we're just gonna see if the game works properly now. 
see when we load it into the game is that we have a solid 120 frames per second which is just fabulous but before actually playing the game too much i want to go in and show you guys another setting which i discovered today actually so if you guys remember from before about the developer options is that they have some more secret settings and specifically one that uh, seem to help a lot with the overall smoothness in the gameplay and input delay so where is it i can't find it but i will soon so the setting is called display h with overlays and we're just gonna turn it on so a few days after i recorded the footage for this video i realized that there are some more settings that are important to change in my opinion and it is these animation scales inside of developer options so what they do is pretty much they make things more sappy if you just check in general as i scroll around and in game in my opinion they actually reduce the input delay which is awesome now another setting is the background process limit and uh, i'm not really sure if this actually benefits uh, your gameplay that much i put it at at most one because i don't have to use a screen recorder but i believe if you use a screen recorder to record your fortnite footage it's good to put it at most two either way go back to fortnite and oh this setting actually is fabulous makes the game feel so smooth so I'm literally choking because the input delay feels so low on this game right now. Holy schm... Either way, these are actually all the settings that you do on your tablet itself. But we have two more things which I believe are crucial to have a great gaming experience. So I'm just gonna take the camera off here and... Wait... And we want to go into this full screen mode here and I want to show you guys my gaming setup a bit. So, first of all, a cooler. A cooler is truly crucial. So what I use is a swamp cooler and I just put it behind my tablet when I game. So what you do is to just turn it on and basically it's a fan here. You fill up this tank with water. Works great to cool the device down. And of course, I also use a adapter to record with my Elgato. But on top of that, I like to always have a charger plugged in. And of course, the ethernet cable. This truly reduces the input delay a crazy amount. So for the coolers and the ethernet adapters, there are a lot to choose from. I believe that you could just search on Amazon, for example, on swamp coolers, which is the one that I use. I know that a lot of pros back in the days tend to use laptop coolers as well. Though I believe the swamp cooler is a bit more powerful. Comes with the downside that your hands can get quite cold. And also for the adapter, there are a lot of different Ethernet adapters. But as I said before, just go to Amazon for example and search for Ethernet to use PC adapters and there will come up a lot of different options. But yeah, because it's Samsung that we talk about, there probably are a lot of more settings to dig into. But I believe that these ones are the most crucial for the overall gameplay experience and the ones that I personally use. Maybe we'll find some more great settings to use for the tablet in the future. But these ones seem to be the most optimal from what I found during my research. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that these settings will help you a lot. So I believe that's all I wanted to show you guys today. I'm planning to make a guide on how to record and stream your tablet as well if you want to get into that. But until then, have a great rest of your day guys.